Okay, good morning and guten morgen. It is my pleasure to introduce the last speaker of plenary lectures. The speaker is Professor Song Young Kim from Korea Institute for Advanced Study. Professor Kim is working on several complex variables. She got a PhD from Seoul National University, advised by Professor Jong Gyu Han. She was a professor of Gangwon National University and now at Center for Mathematical Challenge at KIAS. Recently, Professor Kim has received many awards, including Excellent Domestic Paper Award in 2014, and this year, Female Scientist and Engineer Award in 2015. Today, she will talk about Diva Normal Problem and the Sub-Elliptic Multipliers. Let's welcome Song Young Kim with the applause. Thank you. For, uh, first, I'd like to thank the organizers for invitation. Uh, for me, this is a, a great honor to speak in this special event. Today, I'd like to talk about Diva Neumann problem and it, the regularity, local regularity of the so solution through uh, sub-elliptic multipliers. So first, uh, uh, first I'd like to introduce the Van Neumann problem and then uh, Kohn's algorithm to generate multipliers and then uh, uh, introduce effective termination which is different from uh, just termination, and then introduce two different um, processes to terminate cone algorithm. So first one is through multiplicity and through jet vanishing order. And then if time permits, then uh, I'd like to introduce some questions. Now let me start with some definition. Now, omega is a smoothly bounded domain in Cn, defined by, defined by this R. And if n is 1, then every bounded domain is biholomorphic to disk. But if n is greater than 2, then uh, it is not true anymore. And then we have some geometric concept, which is called pseudo-convexity. It's a biholomorphic invariant. And to define this, uh, first I'd like to first define holomorphic tangent space. This is a zero one vectors that is tangent to the boundary. And then we define Levy form like this. So DD bar R restricted to this complex tangent space and then check whether it's positive semi-definite. And then if at all boundary point, this is positive semi-definite, then omega is called pseudo-convex. And there's some example. So every convex domain, the real convex domain, is pseudo-convex. But not all domain is pseudo-convex. For instance, ball with radius one minus ball with radius one 1 over 2 is not pseudo-convex. And this is uh, an important uh, concept to solve Diva problem. So for zero one one form, which is Diva closed, we want to solve Diva equation. Then uh, this is not solvable always. And then in 65, 1965, Hermando proved that this Diva equation is solvable if and only if omega is pseudo-convex. And this is one of the fundamental questions in several complex variables. And then uh, later, Kohn proved the global regularity of the solution, saying that if input data is globally regular, then there is a solution which is also globally regular. But then uh, local regularity does not hold. So Kathleen gives an example 
where, which is also pseudo-convex, but local regularity fails. That means if you have, if, if your input data is regular at some point, you, you may not find any uh, locally regular solution. So now we introduce the Van Neumann problem. So like uh, Riemannian case, we can define uh, complex Lap Lap Diva Laplacian like this. So uh, LPQ is the space of all square integrable PQ forms. And then we take the L2 adjoint of Diva, and then we define uh, harmonic PQ forms, which is the PQ forms that satisfies this equation. And then we want to solve this equation. So for any R alpha, which is orthogonal to this harmonic PQ forms, we want to find phi that solves this equation. This is a de Van Neumann problem. And if there is a solution, then there is a unique solution, which is orthogonal to this harmonic form. It's exactly uh, analog to uh, Riemannian case. And this solution is called cone solution. And we want to uh, investigate the local regularity of this cone solution. Now we introduce sub elliptic multiplier. So for cone the local regularity, uh, we want to uh, construct some a priori estimate. So uh, this, this is kind of a priori estimate. So a function term f at one point is called scalar multiplier of order epsilon if some, ne op some open neighborhood this inequality holds. So here this is Sobolov norm. And then if f is just one, then we obtain a priori estimate. And this phi is all test form, smooth test form. And then we collect all scalar multiplier and call it IP. And this set is uh, ideal. And then we call it multiplier ideal. And a priori estimate holds uh, exactly when we have constant, non-zero constant function in the idea. So it <coughs> the question for uh, local regularity is whether we have one here. And then we introduce another uh, multiplier. So a smooth one zero form is called vector multiplier if this inequality holds. Here that is the usual dot product, uh, I mean inner product. And then like before, we collect all vector multipliers. Then this set is a uh, module. And then we call it a uh, module of vector multipliers. Uh, Korn, Nirenberg showed that uh, the local regularity for Korn solution holds if and only if one is in the idea. I, I mean, one is a multiplier, scalar multiplier. Then uh, he, uh, Korn, constructed an algorithm to produce multipliers. So now suppose from now on, every omega is a pseudo-convex bound, smoothly bounded pseudo-convex domain, and P is a boundary point. So we uh, normalize boundary so that the uh, normal direction is given by Cn, and holomorphic tangent direction is by, given by C1 to Cn minus 1. Then cone algorithm is as follows. First, uh, we, 
we construct initial multiplier. So uh, first initial multiply, initial multiply, scalar multiplier, is a defining equation of omega, and then we differentiate r with cj's, and then take partial. Then this is a vector multiplier, initial data of vector multiplier. And then we generate new multipliers using this. The first one is if you have scalar multiplier, and this is vector multiplier. And if we have vector multiplier, then take f to be this. We will call this f notation. For notation, we write f as determinant. And then this is, again, a scalar multiplier. And then uh, this scalar multiplier has real radical property. That means if a function is bounded by some other scalar multipliers, then f is itself, f itself is a scalar multiplier. So we form an idea and then take uh, its radical to construct uh, new multipliers. Vector, yeah. Yeah, this is uh, this is a, a partial derivative. Sorry, <laughs> sorry for the notation. Now uh, we want to uh, construct constant function one through uh, through this cone algorithm. So if we uh, construct one as a scalar multiplier, then we will say that this cone algorithm terminates. Then uh, cone uh, suggested some. Mm, he can give some conjecture when a uh, con algorithm terminates. So for that, uh, we will introduce type. So now consider the set of all holomorphic curves through this point. And then consider uh, the contact order of one curve and the boundary of omega. And then take supremum. So this type uh, measures the highest order of contact of holomorphic curve and, uh, and the boundary. And P is called finite type if this type is finite. And we can easily see that if this is real analytic and if type is infinite, then there is this the curve which uh, Contact which contacts boundary with infinite order. So if this real analytic, then this curve should be in, in the boundary. So um, this means that if this is finite type, <coughs> then there is no holomorphic curve through P. Then uh, Kohn's conjecture is follows. So the cone algorithm terminates if and only if this type is finite. <coughs> and then he um, uh, give more uh, conjectures on effectiveness. That means uh, the number of steps to terminate and then the order of sub ellipticity is bounded, controlled by some explicit function of type and dimension. So this is effectiveness conjecture. And without effectiveness, uh, Diedrich and Fornes shows the termination of Kohn's uh, conjecture for real analytic case. So in this talk, we will focus on effective term termination. And here's some geometric reason for Kohn's conjecture. This is just a reason, reasoning, it's not proof. 
but give some idea uh, why this con why Kohn's conjecture uh, holds. So, <coughs> on the boundary, we consider the Parfian differential system, and if n is an integral manifold, then by neuron the Nirenberg theorem, this integral manifold is a complex sub-manifold inside this boundary. Now, uh, first, uh, we want to find whether uh, there is a vector that satisfies this equation. So we define subset x of boundary omega so that there is vector that satisfies this equation. So if x is empty, then there is no solution, of course. But you sh uh, in many cases, x is non-empty. And then, um, then uh, since if omega is pseudo-convex, uh, this Levy form is uh, always semi-positive definite. So this existence of this vector is equivalent to the determinant of the Levy form vanishes. So there is zero eigenvalue of the Levy form. So this set and this set coincide. And this is the first new scalar multiplier. So the first step, uh, we uh, uh, express this set by this zero set of the first new ge newly generated scalar multiplier. And then we, uh, to find integral manifold, we want to we have to prolong this system. And the prolongation of system and defining this sub uh, sequence of this axis for prolongation. And then finding zero sets of newly generated multiplier ideal coincides. So whenever uh, there is some zero sets of multiplier ideas, then that means uh, there is a, for real analytic case, uh, you have prolongation and some compatibility condition. So if the sequence of x is no, no non-vanishing, then real analytic case, there is a, a integral manifold, which is complex sub-manifold for generic point. Uh, there's a complex manifold through it. So to check whether uh, the zero set of scalar multiplier is uh, empty or not, is to check whether this system is integrable or not. And for uh, just for local regularity, Kathleen proved the local regularity of the Van Neumann problem. But uh, his method is completely different, and he uses family of nice exhaustion functions and then show that the a priori estimate holds. So let's go back to Kohn algorithm. And uh, here, we only consider special domain. A domain is called special, special domain. If now this omega is in Cn plus 1, and the defining function is real Cn plus this is less than 0, where this Fj is a holomorphic function in the first n variables only. Now consider, assume that 0 is in our reference point. Then omega is a finite type if and only if this condition holds. <coughs> this condition holds. Here, this, this means it's an idea generated by F1 and through Fm. So the finite type condition is somehow easy to check in this case. And Kohn algorithm is simpler than uh, others. So first, uh, we take 
Jacobian of Fs, where each F is either a multiplier or a linear combination of Fs. This. And the full Jacobian is a scalar multiplier. And its sub elliptic order is uh, greater or equal to minimum of this order, or if everything is a linear combination of Fs, then it's one over four. And then second, we take radical. So uh, this is holomorphic, so we can take just authentic radical, and the sub elliptic order changes from epsilon to m epsilon over m. And then now we uh, give some example where if, if we just simply follow this algorithm, then we may have uh, ineffective termination. So this is an example. So omega is defined by this equation. So this is a special domain. And F1 is this, and F2 is this. Then we can uh, compute its type. And the type is always less than 3m, where m is here and 3 comes from here. And then we uh, apply Kohn's algorithm. So first we have to, there is no other way, but have to take Jacobian of F1 and F2 and say that it's G. And then next we take Jacobian of G and F1. Then we, take, then we obtain this function. So a uh, coordinate function uh, is a multiplier. So we take root of this function. Then the order changes by this number. So we have two uh, Jacobian and one root. So order is like this. And then uh, we take another Jacobian. Then we take C2 square more C1. So this is again a multiplier. So we take root. Then two uh, coordinate functions, C1 and C2, is again a multiplier. So then finally we take Jacobian to obtain one. But then uh, sub elliptic order is bounded below by this number and this epsilon is given by this. So k can be any ar arbitrary high number. So this sub elliptic order is not bounded by uh, the type. And so this is not effective. So this in ineffective termination occurs when we take radical of this function. So the question is that whether we can take controlled root or not. So uh, in two, 2010, CU uh, suggested some effective termination algorithm. So the key point is to uh, control the root of root order when we take radical. So for each new step, assign some integer for root order. So uh, the effective algorithm is like this. First step, we uh, construct first uh, scalar multiplier. So take all Jacobians of this linear combination of Fs, then, uh, then take its radical, but the root order is uh, controlled by Q1, this number. And then se next step is to add uh, this multiplier by a new, newly generated multiplier, and then take it's radical, but again, this is the root order is again controlled. So the question is that whether we can find this sequence that is uh, controlled by uh, type and dimension, and then uh, that terminates Kohn algorithm. 
So we need some quantitative invariance that controls the root order. So uh, CU suggested to use multiplicity. So we define uh, multiplicity of terms of holomorphic functions by this. So this is uh, the usual multiplicity, intersection multiplicity. And uh, if we have fewer uh, holomorphic functions, so if uh, k is less than n, then we complement this equa these functions with linear functions and then um, take its multiplicity and then uh, take infimum, where infimum is taken over all generic linear functions. Here we uh, choose, we can choose generic linear functions. And then this is a multiplicity of these k functions. Then uh, effective termination by CU is given by this. First we select linear combinations of Fs and linear combinations of Fs, and then take its Jacobian determinant. So this is the first uh, newly generated scalar multiplier. And then uh, we compute the multiplicity of F. And then uh, we want to replace Cn by uh, the zero set of V. So that means uh, we restrict Gs to this uh, variety and then take Jacobian determinant again. And then uh, compute the multiplicity again. But there's a, a problem. So first of all, uh, uh, this variety is n not smooth at the origin in general. So then uh, to take, instead of taking Jacobian, we restrict, we choose n minus one uh, Gs. So for instance, we, we can take first n minus one Gs, and then take its partial Jacobian in, in, instead of full Jacobian. Then the real difficulty occurs uh, that the, f the partial Jacobian is not uh, actually a multi multiplier. So only full Jacobian is a multiplier, and the restriction of G to V is not, um, and take its Jacobian is not uh, allowed. So uh, he overcome, so you overcome uh, uh, this difficulty by construct special scalar multiplier. So uh, F is uh, the Jacobian of G's and then uh, suppose this restricted to V uh, is a finite map then we const then he construct a Weistrass polynomial of Zn which is in the radical of F. So that, so multiplier idea has radical property, so F tilde is again a multiplier, but this has special form. And then we can differentiate this form by applying this operator. And then, <coughs> so we repeatedly uh, apply this uh, operator to obtain partial Jacobian as a um, multiplier, scalar multiplier. And through this uh, process, CU obtained an effective termination for N uh, is 2. So uh, he constructs 
one biostrous polynomial and then differentiate many times and then he can terminate his algorithm. Then uh, we, uh, by following uh, Sius idea, we obtain uh, uh, this result. So first choose n linear combination of f's such that the multiplicity is finite. Then um, we follow uh, Sius idea to cre construct special form of multipliers, saying that uh, fj, uh, namely that fj is a multiplier of this formula, where qj is a Weierstrass polynomial in G gj, and then uh, the variable number of variable decreases for each j, qj starts with gj, and then um, there's some and suppose k is n, then this part disappear. So we have, so for instance, if k is n, we obtain this special form of multipliers. So uh, this is a regular system, a regular, this is because uh, the variable Sorry, variable uh, so only start from gj, so this is a regular system. And the point is that the uh, order of sub elliptici and the degree is also controlled. And by taking its radical, we can terminate cone algorithm. And then here's an uh, uh, idea of proof. First we <coughs> choose, suppose we uh, construct uh, K scalar multiplier. Then we want to construct K plus one, one more uh, scalar multiplier. So for this, first we estimate the multiplicity of partial Jacobians. So then this is, well, this is just computation. We can easily compute. Then, uh, like CU, uh, this multiplier, newly generated multiplier is in the ideal, and so we, in, in the radical, so we have to take uh, root. So taking root order, control root order, uh, we need some effective null standards. That means if uh, first k and then f <coughs> satisfies this condition, so multiplicity of phi is mu, and then f vanishes on the variety of these functions, then uh, null standards, Hilbert null standards tell such that f is in the radical of v, but then uh, the root order is also controlled by multiplicity and the dimension. And the, this is, the proof is given by some modification of uh, Heyer's effective neural standards. He uh, obtained mm, effective neural standards by uh, type of the idea, and then we replace this his type by multiplicity. Then finally, and most importantly, we have to differentiate this new, <coughs> like uh, CU's case, we have to repeatedly differentiate this newly generated multiplier to obtain partial Jacobian as a multiplier. So that, for that, we modify Catalin's triangular system, and then we uh, differentiate mm, the system repeatedly. Now, uh, we will uh, introduce 
another method. <coughs> so uh, we define uh, jet vanishing order. So now S is a term of holomorphic functions. It's a set of terms of holomorphic functions. Oh, oh, sorry. So, um, and V is a variety through the origin, and gamma is the set of all holomorphic curves, gamma through origin and inside V. And for any integer k, we consider the case jet of f's in, in S, and then uh, compose this jet with gamma and uh, it compute its vanishing order and take infimum of k and take supremum of uh, this for gamma. So suppose if k is zero, then this is the usual um, Dendelo type. And we uh, generalize Dendelo type to k jet. And we can control <coughs> uh, the difficulty is to take vanishing order of Jacobian determinant. So um, we can control the vanishing order for C2 case. So given a holomorphic functions and curve, <coughs> through the origin that satisfies the vanishing order at the origin of phi is greater or equal to 2. And the k jet of f, k minus 1 jet, is bigger than mm, this number. Then we take Jacobian of f and phi. Then uh, the type of this Jacobian is computed by this equation. So we can compute uh, vanishing order. And if the vanish k is just zero, then we can, uh, we can uh, compute the vanishing order of Jacobian determinant. So, so through uh, induction, uh, so we, first we can start with some high k and then through induction, we uh, from k to k minus one, we uh, compute uh, the Jacobian uh, and jet order, jet order of Jacobian, and whenever we take Jacobian, this k decreases. So uh, in C two, uh, I mean in the special domain is in C three we obtain effective termination. And this process is different by the previous, from previous one by uh, this. So cons construction constructed basically three parts. First, take Jacobian, and then form idea, and take radical. And the problematic part is taking radical. So we want to avoid uh, this third process at, as, as possible. <laughs> so um, this process uh, takes uh, the radical only at the last time. So um, the good point is that this jet vanishing order uh, has some stability. So we can put off Fs uh, with higher order, then this process still uh, mm, gives some effective termination. So we hope that there's some application to smooth case. And then finally, uh, we uh, give some questions. So we want to uh, 
do the same thing for more general uh, PDEs. Now suppose omega is just a uh, domain, open set, containing zero. This, this will be our reference point. And this is Rn, actually, sorry. So we, uh, and then H is a collection of smooth functions in omega. And then here, uh, ij runs from 1 to q, and alpha beta runs from 1 to n. Then we uh, define uh, this quadratic form like this. And then assume that this quadratic form is Hermitian. Then uh, we want to solve the PD of this form. So this U satisfies this inequality, this equation for all test form. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. And then we want to show the local regularity. So, like before, we can define scalar multiplier. That so G is a scalar multiplier of order epsilon if uh, this inequality holds for all smooth form, for all test form. And then uh, the question is whether one constant function one is in is a scalar multiplier or not. And like before, the set of all multipliers form an idea and also have real radical property. And in 2017, CU constructed an algorithm for, uh, to generate multipliers. And the question is that whether we can terminate CU's process or not. So first, like finite type condition, find a necessary and sufficient condition for termination of CU's algorithm. This is our first uh, question. And then, like before, just termination and effective termination is a different question. So second question is that whether we can find effective termination process. So I stop here, thank you. Do you have any questions or remark? Okay, if not, I have a small question. Okay. Uh, you are dealing with uh, only a finite type, Dangelo finite yeah. case. Yes. Can you generalize your method to infinite type, for example, exponent exponentially infinite type domain? Um, you mean the local regularity? Mm, for infinite type domain, uh, local regularity does not hold. But you can uh, ask similar question for uh, not not for regularity, but uh, you can ask the same question uh, for this. So whether you can find integral manifold of this system through uh, uh, this process. And then if it's infinite type, uh, then uh, you, you can check whether the existence of integral manifold and the, the existence of zero set of Multiplier idea coincides. Okay, thank you. Okay, if there is no further questions, okay, let's work. Let's thank speaker again. Thank you.